Corn School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today, I'm catching up with Mike Bayshard. He is the field production manager for Pride Seeds. Mike, how's it going? It's going very well. Thanks, Bernard. Thanks for coming out today. Yeah, and thanks for the invitation down on the shores of Lake St. Clair. Um, we're going to do part two of our look at seed corn production. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we were here 60 days ago. You planted this crop, and we looked at all the details that goes into planting a seed corn crop. Um, details, details, details. We'll leave it at that. Today, I want to talk about pollination. And and, uh, you know, what that next step in the process here. You know, here we are. Um, we're going to talk detasseling and a lot of stuff. But it really is pollination. Why is it so important? Well, Bernard, pollination is really important. It's the most time-sensitive process we have with seed production. So we need to get the female tassels out of the plant before any self-pollinations can happen. So um, I'll give you an example. On my left here, we have a male. So the male line, we got some tassels. On my right here is the female plant. Um, the puller had just left this field just minutes ago. Uh, it's removed probably 60 to 70% of the plants mechanically, mm-hmm. Bernard. So um, that's a really good thing. So. Um, if we don't do our job of getting the tassels out in that timely period, um, we're going to take a, you know, a hundred dollar crop per bushel down to a five dollar commodity crop mm-hmm. in a heartbeat. So um, we have a very short window, and I'll, I like to use the 48, 24 to 48 hours to get this uh, process of what I call detasseling started. So mm-hmm. uh, tomorrow morning in this exact field. Uh, there'll be a couple buses with students coming in here to detassel and remove all the female plants that the machine did not get. Yeah, yeah. As I say, you know, you need 99.8. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. We right. need. We're, that's our level of purity that we're striving for. We want to remove no less than 99.8 percent of the female tassels out of this field. So, Mike, we just put up the drone here. We're flying down this field. Just. Bring us back to how this is planted. What are we looking at here? Yeah, from the drone's uh, viewpoint, Bernard, um, you can see the distinctive four and one pattern. Four female rows, one male. And you can also see that the tassels are going to be removed off the female plants. And the male pollens, uh, rows, sorry, are left alone. Um, That male pollen is what's going to pollinate those female plants and create the hybrid. So let's run through the process. It really starts with deroguing. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's looking after both lines, male and female. So um, you know, we're approaching uh, what we call the pollination period. We're just one or two days away. But uh, a week prior to this, we were in these fields uh, to purify the lines to make sure that they're uh, 100% genetically the right female and the right male. So we have crews of students that come into the field looking for any characteristics that are different than what this female looks like or this male looks like. And if they're not the same, they're being cut down. Um, So typically uh, uh, there'll be a a student in every eight rows, something like that, and they can look across several rows. So they don't just need to do one row at a time. So A lot of ground to cover, right? A lot of ground to cover. That process um, gets repeated three to four times before we get it to the level we want. Right. Um, we want it down to somewhere no more than one or two uh, rogues per acre. So, And then we move in what I would call the decasting process. And that, that really starts with, with cutting the crop, right? That's that's right. Um, you know a lot about seed production. Yeah, I've been yeah. around. Yeah. Um, so, Bernard, um, yeah, that's right. The cutting process is the first step. Um, that is like, to me, the, the setup of the field. Um, we're coming in with a machine that basically just uh, they look like lawnmower blades and they're coming in and they're cutting the tassel partially to set up the field so that in two days from now, 48 hours later, it kind of starts to look more tabletop. Right. And um, when the machine comes in with the puller, there's sets of eyes that see the height of the crop and can adjust up and down on the fly to get the tassels. Yeah. So it's the setup before the puller arrives. So the cut is necessary. It makes the pulling job 
more efficient yeah. and more effective. And now we're going to roll in with the with the puller. We've got one in this field. Tell us about the process here, uh, Mike. We're going up and down those fields, pulling tassels. This is an amazing machine. Yeah, so um, the machine is pulling uh, 12 female rows at a time. And um, basically they're um, very high speed um, tires rotating at very high speeds that are um, removing the tassel mechanically. Um, um, detasseling is quite an expensive uh, step and uh, when you can do as much mechanically as you can, it's a, it's a better outcome for the company. So that's why we're striving always to get 60 or 70 or even 80% pulls. Right. This year with the rains we've had, we had some really good growing conditions and I want to say this is a little more typical, a little more average than typical. So we're getting a little bit higher uh, degree pulls uh, this year versus last year's crop, say. So Mike, the puller has finished this field, and then I guess you got to go to the old traditional detasseling. Crews, of you use a lot of students coming in here, walking these fields. Talk about what they're looking for and what they need to do. Okay, so um, obviously it's mother nature. Uh, not The field isn't perfectly tabletop. Um, we're gonna get tassels that are gonna be missed, uh, likely because they're slightly lower, slightly, uh, they could be bent over from the wind or something like that. So uh, the crews are coming in here tomorrow morning to remove all the tassels that are nearing pollination that there's, can pose there's one a danger. For example. Yeah, there's one for example, and this needs to be removed tomorrow. and it, a student will simply reach up and pull that and drop it to the ground. Hmm. So, and they'll take one row at a time. And there'll be, uh, like I said, probably 30 kids on this side of the field, 30 on that side. And they'll be followed by checkers. And each checker might watch about eight different students to make sure they're doing their function correctly. Hmm. If uh, he has a bad worker, there's missed tassels, he will be back here the next day. Right. It's not what he wants to do. He wants to be able to come back here two days later, let the young stuff continue to grow up, and then do a second pass. Right. Right. Two or three days after the second pass, we're typically going in and doing a third pass. Right. Those are get to get the delayed areas. We're gonna have some water damage areas that are more set back, and those are the areas that we're really, really covering on the third and fourth passes. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, after three or four passes, we'll have we'll reach that point you talked about, 99.8% uh, of the tassels removed. Yeah. And so inspection is such a part here, right? I mean, you have to pass inspection. The fields have to be uh, inspected to meet those standards. Yeah, so I have a team of four great inspectors that are monitoring when the detasselers need to start, well, basically when the field needs to be cut, when the field needs to be pulled, and when the contractors need to start. And alternatively, when the second, third, and if fourth passes are necessary, when they need to happen. So they're constantly in these fields every day, checking on that, checking on um, can the field hold another day before a third pass, or do I need to put them in? Because if I wait two extra days, I'm gonna have some shedding female tassels. Mm -hmm. That will cause selfing, and that is, that is what we do not want. So yeah. we want that male pollen to land on the female silks. And these silks are, they're real close. They're getting there, but you can see a, it's gonna, it's gonna see yeah. silk out here in the next day yeah. or so. So you don't want those females self-pollinating, right? That, that's right. So that's what'll ruin the crop, and that's what we, that's, that's our main function here. We're just trying to get rid of the female tassels on time. Right. So, so hey, um, tremendous amount of work and detail here at the tasseling as well. Um, part two or step two of the process, um, we're going to come back in 60 days for harvest, correct? That's correct. In about uh, 60 days. Uh, so typically right after Labor Day weekend, we will start rolling and start to harvest this crop. And typically we like to start somewhere around 35 to 37 percent moisture range. And uh, it'll take us somewhere around six weeks to bring the entire crop in. So there you have it. Um, there's detasseling and pollination. Uh, we will be back at harvest uh, with Mike Bayshard. Uh, we will see you then. You going to be there? I will be here. I'm excited to get this harvest season started. So uh, look forward to seeing you, Bernard, in 60 days. We'll see you then. Okay.